Hysteroscopy is a diagnostic procedure which allows the examination of the cervical canal and the inspection of the uterine cavity. I performed my first hysteroscopy in 1981 with the type 1 Hamus microcorpoid hysteroscope. After 22 years and more than 15,000 office procedures, I want to share my experience with younger colleagues. What kind of instrument we have to choose? The hysteroscope can be rigid or flexible. When I started many years ago, the flexible instruments were not so advanced as they are now. The quality of images was very poor. That's why I've been using a rigid endoscope for so many years. My choice derived also from the opportunity to have in the same instrument the characteristics of a colposcope, of a rigid endoscope and of a microscope with high magnification to observing contact, the cervical cells and their premioplastic modifications. Anyway, the contact hysteroscope is not very useful for the endometrium, and the panoramic view is much more helpful in diagnosing intrauterine pathologies. Because the uterus has a virtual cavity, we have to distend it in order to observe inside. Fluid distension media can be liquid or gaseous. Both have advantages and defects. A liquid medium, as a saline solution, allows a better inspection of even minor structures and you can observe them swinging in the fluid. Anyway, you have to spend much more efforts to preserve your office clean. Another benefit is that you can produce any irritation on the phrenic nerve. The use of CO2, on the contrary, is much more easier, but the intrauterine pressure can hide minor changes in the endometrium. Patients can undergo a light pain on their right shoulder due to the effect of carbonic acid on the diaphragm. The insufflation can be arranged with a switch around 70-90 mm of Hg. Then you can watch at the pressure and the flow on the insufflator to prevent unintended injuries to the patient. The main trouble that you can encounter during the first procedures is to introduce the endoscope throughout the cervical canal into the uterine cavity without producing any discomfort to the patient. How can you reach this target? You must have in mind that the endoscope has a 30 degree oblique view. This allows to completely control lateral structures using a rigid endoscope by simply rotating the instrument on its axis. Sometimes you can experience a very antiverted uterus. In this case, it can be very hard to proceed towards the right direction without a simple track. As you reach the posterior wall of the cervical canal, you have to gently push with your left hand onto the fundus of the antiverted uterus, moving it to modify the angle between the corpus and the cervix. This is an easy and painless movement that allows the introduction of the tip of the hysteroscope inside the uterine cavity. We never use a cervical tenaculum, which can be very painful for the patient. In case of severely retroverted uterus, you can solve the problem with another little trick. 
because the use of the vaginal speculum can reduce significantly the movements of the hysteroscope, while you can much more easily move upward the hysteroscope if it is not applied, I prefer to perform the hysteroscopy without using the speculum. The external movements can be much more extensive than expected, and you can address the instrument to the right direction without the risk of producing bleeding or pain. Sometimes the progression can be difficult for cervical adhesions that turn the cervical canal into a narrow duct. In these cases you have to proceed with caution trying to gently detach the upside walls with the tip of the instrument pushing against the fibrotic tissue. This procedure must be very soft, always performed under direct visual control, watching at the heart rate of the patient. Remember to ask her frequently if she feels any pain or she experiences any problem related to a vagal stimulation. Once you have entered the uterine cavity, get a general view of this shape. Then look at the right cornwall side, at the fundus, go to the left tubal ostium, watch at the characteristics of the endometrium, then draw back the hysteroscope observing the cervical canal before removing the instrument from the external os. In my experience, using the above mentioned approach, I've been able to complete the hysteroscopy in more than 92% of all patients, with a satisfaction rate higher than 80%, obtaining useful information with this simple diagnostic office procedure.